Welcome to week number four, which marks our halfway point of our course. We will begin with a recap of week number three in our flashback section. I then will move on to outline this week's activities, which consist once again of a discussion forum and written reflection. We will continue to focus on literacy leaders this week. At the end of the presentation, I'll outline what is left to cover in our course. Week three, flashback. The Literacy Leaders Forum flowed pretty easily for many of you, and many good points were brought to the forefront, forefront because of it. It's so nice to hear that many of you have such great support in your districts. I loved all the different ideas of what your perfect leadership team would be and the vision for those teams. There are some I even want to try to implement in our, my own school. The forum led to many dis questions about the roles and responsibilities of the reading teacher, specialist, and how the literacy coach are involved in different school districts. The literacy coach role is not very well defined in school districts, and many use that position in different ways depending on the needs of their schools. My plan for next week is to share with you what the DPI has to say about licensure, remedial reading, the specialist, curriculum, and staff development. This can be some eye-opening information, but information that is important to know. In your reflection, you read the ILA's position statement on adolescent literacy, and were sent to a link about developmentally appropriate practices. The information about the DPA hopefully wasn't new to you and just validated the practices you know you and your teachers need to continue to use. The ILA pre information presented eight principles outlining what adolescents deserve. In the reflections that I looked at, a trend came about, the fact that many of you felt your weakness is with adolescent literacy. Early intervention has been proven to be a huge factor in ensuring success for readers that struggle. However, the secondary levels sometimes are left out when it comes to literacy support, since so much attention and resources are allocated at the primary and intermediate levels. Students who fall into the gray areas or have always been on that border of receiving intervention can find themselves struggling later on in school. Middle schools and high schools need to continue to support students in the area of literacy at their levels. Our district has addressed this by focusing on disciplinary literacy and making it clear to the non-ELA teachers that they are teachers of reading as well. And in turn, we provide staff development on how to implement vocabulary and reading strategies in their classes. There is more that can still be done, but enlightening those teachers in the content areas how to utilize best practice teaching in their classrooms is at least a good start. Activities for week four. One of our activities for this week is to read chapters 10 and 11 of our text. These chapters focus on the classroom. One chapter discusses print-rich classrooms and the other about differentiation. Our forum will run a little differently this week. We will be using a strategy called Say the Last Word for Me for our discussions. The purpose of this strategy is to strengthen, clarify, and deepen the meaning of the chapters we have all read. The process is designed so that we can build upon each other's thinking and create a dialogue about what is read. As you read these two chapters, mark several quotes or phrases that inspired you. Your initial post, due by Thursday, will contain only one quote or phrase from the reading, along with the page number, which was something that held significant meaning to you. It may be something you agreed or disagreed about, an idea that puzzled, surprised, or excited you. In your initial post on Thursday, don't share the reasons why you chose that quote. Only post the quote or phrase itself along with the page number. Over the course of the remaining days, other classmates will then respond and comment on the passage that you shared, expressing their thinking, connections, or questions about that quote or phrase as well. As you reply to other quotes and phrases of other learners, be sure to provide textual evidence to support your thoughts on their quote or phrase. Then on Sunday, you'll come back and revisit your initial post, synthesizing what others have said and having the last word, sharing your original thinking of why you chose that quote or phrase to begin with. So once again, on Thursday, you need to post only a quote or phrase from the text and the page number you found it on. Then replies will happen to your quote and you will reply to other learners' quotes over the course of the next few days, sharing what you think about that specific quote or phrase. Then on Sunday, you'll come back to your initial 
quote or phrase and have your last word. This form will be worth 30 points due to the critical thinking and analysis involved. Please let me know if you have any questions about how to utilize this form. Other activity for week number four is a written reflection. You will find a folder under week number four with, this, with some reading material for you. Please read this material for this week's reflection. There is an article, an excerpt from a chapter, and full chapters from different resources. All of these readings surround the idea of leaders being the agent of change within education. One reading focuses on the 21 responsibilities of the school leader, another on closing the gap, which is a huge focus of literacy leader, and another focuses on the essential ingredients needed to make change happen. I also included an article entitled Habits of Mentally Tough People. As leaders are going... As we know, leaders are going to experience resistance at some point, and in order to stick with the vision and change that needs to happen, leaders need to be mentally tough so as not to feel defeated. This isn't necessarily focused on education, but just being mentally tough in general. All of these readings will support your reflection on being an agent of change. In this reflection, you will reflect on what ideas from these pieces stuck with you, connections that you made, and any aha moments that were brought to the forefront as a result of reading these texts. Your reflection is due Sunday by 10 o'clock in the evening. So what's left? What do we have left to tackle in this course? In week number five, we will shift gears and focus on staff development and end our course with supervision. Over the next couple weeks, we will continue to make our way through our best practice, practices text, exploring more about staff development. Our supervision focus will be in regards to the reading specialist administrative, administrative role. And finally, don't forget about the decision maker interview. This is due at the end of the course. And as I'm planning the rest of the course out, it looks as though week number eight, our last week, can solely focus on this final assignment. So enjoy watching the Super Bowl if you're going to watch it. And we will speak to you soon. Do great things.